what's up guys it's me brandon johnson from used boats tv and today i'm going to take you on an instructional demonstration of a stunning 2006 sea ray 240 sunday this video is to show anyone out there interested how a 240 sun deck performs when you're out there on the water and to show how to work it. So do me a favor, if you've never, wanna, never watched one of our videos before, please consider subscribing by clicking down below. We're going to put the boat in the water, talk about how the systems work, look at the gauges. We're going to find a cruise speed, good speed for water sports, and a top speed. Uh, we're going to learn how trim tabs work, and then we'll finish up some drone footage. Let's get started in 30 seconds. But first, I'd like to introduce our channel. I've been passionately selling boats for over 19 years. The purpose of this channel is to help you and your family enjoy boats and boating just as much as my family and I enjoy it. So thanks to the help of my staff here at Heartland Marine and my sons, we've been able to successfully upload hundreds of boat reviews, instructional operation, help, and how-to videos. I don't ask for anything in return, except for the opportunity to possibly help you find a boat in your time frame. So to stay up on everything we upload, click that subscribe button below and stay tuned. Nice. Now, once you have your Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck in the water, because it's got to be in the water to run, after you've put your plug in it, come back here underneath the port side aft corner butt seat. Lift the seat out. In here, we have dual batteries with a switch. So when we go boating, we turn the switch to both. The alternator is going to keep both the batteries charged while we're out there having fun. Now, if we're going to stop, throw an anchor, cove out, listen to the radio, we switch that to one or two. That way, when our fun's over and we're ready to go boating again, if the battery's dead, we can just switch it to the other, start the boat up, take off, go have fun. When we're done for the day, shut it off. So right now we're on both, put our seat back into position and come to the helm. Now, in order to not make this video extremely long, it's long enough as it is, <laughs> we're gonna include some links in the description, a bunch of links, all to help improve your boat ownership experience while out here on the water enjoying it with your friends and family. Those links include how to operate tilt and trim, what to do when your boat won't start, how to dock boats and tie ropes. So that way we can kind of minimize this but still provide great value by showing you how to do all those things. But this specific Sea Ray is multi-port injected amazingness, powered by a 350 mag MPI 300 horse with the Bravo 3 dual prop outdrive. So to start it, kill switches up, boats in neutral, key on. When you turn the key on, you hear an alarm, which means, hey kids, get away from the propellers, and we fire it right up, just like that. Now, once the boat's running, little piece of advice, before we take off, I always recommend to shut our window. You'll see a lot of people going up and down the lake all day with their windshields open, and what happens is this piece begins to bow against the other piece, then it doesn't fit right. So for this part of the video, we're gonna go over buttons, switches, and a little bit of operating instructions, and then I'll drive the boat, teach you how that works, show you how it operates, and finish up with some drone footage. So shifting, really easy. Lift up on the red handle on the back side of the shifter, engages into gear. Bravo 3 shift extremely smooth. There's a definitive catch for forward. Back to neutral, reverse, same way. Definitive catch, which is nice so that you don't go, ooh, that's not good. Okay, while you're shifting, by the way, this controls your outdrive. It goes up and it goes down. Be sure to refer to the description below for a link that explains how to operate tilt and trim. But if you're shifting and you have your finger on this button, your outdrive is going to come out of the water and you're not going to be going anywhere. So we have tilt steering, looking at the helm, so we can set that wherever we want it. Buttons and switches. We have a horn right here. We have a wiper. Now those are made for a splash, not a rainstorm. Bilge pump, this is automatic. Most likely you'll never use it, but there's a button for it. Blower ventilates the engine compartment. Now a Coast Guard captain would tell you to leave that on if you're at idle speed. Uh, since it's multi-port injected, turn it on after you get gas. Right here we have an automatic fire suppression system in the engine compartment. When the green light's on, you know it's good. Stereo remote controls right here. And it works. I'm in these are our trim tab controls, which we will uh, mess with those after we drive the boat. So accessory right here, captain's call exhaust. Oh man, this sounds baby. 
This sounds amazing, baby, I should say. Remember, only switch your captain's call at idle speed because what determines where that exhaust is coming out is turned by pencil lead bars attached to flappers. So if we're going fast, we're putting a lot of water and exhaust through the engine, you'll break the bars, bust, and the flappers will cave in. It's bad, you don't want to do that. Water pump, we usually don't mess with these. Uh, it's the fresh water system. We don't mess with them much because the water smells like sewage in the summertime if it sits in here. Navigation light, that's when you're driving at night. The red and green are built in in the front. You'll also notice that your anchor light will come on, which is stored in the ski storage compartment, plugs in the back. Now, if you're stopped at night, shut off the nav lights, just turn the anchor light on. Cockpit lights are in the inside. Now that we know what the buttons and switches do, let's look here. We got a speedometer. We have a four in one gauge. So zoom in real close because of that glare, Bill. Speedometer right here. We have a four in one gauge, which is our fuel, oil pressure, engine temp, tilt and trim. So this boat has smart craft. I call it weekend saving smart craft because it will digitally tell you everything you ever want to know about the motor. If you're low on fluids or anything like that, it's all built in right here. So this baby only has 203 hours on it. And right there is our depth. So the depth finder's in it. Most people leave it there, leave it there. But if you tilt and trim, go up, see it takes over that gauge. And we'll go ahead and come back down and watch what happens. Three, two, one back to depth. All right. So now that we know what the buttons and switches do for the driving portion of the video, I'm going to take the camera from Mr. Bill here and we're going to drive the boat. What we want to do is show what the speed, uh, kind of how to operate it for doing water sports. Then we're going to find a comfortable cruise speed and we're going to see what the top speed is. Um, remember, for everyone that's out there test driving boats, to see what your top speed is, first run the boat trimmed all the way down. Again, refer to the tilt and trim video. That's where you're going to put the hardest load on the boat. You're trimming it down. You're leaving it trimmed down, so you're pushing that nose down. Put, doing that's going to put the hardest load on it to see if the motor hits, misses, spits, butters, or falls on its face. We don't want that. If it does that, you don't want to buy it. Okay? And then we're going to trim up, let the drive come up. Forward momentum allows the nose to come up. We get on top of the water and go fast. All right? Let's get started. Hey, Bill, you got your hat on backwards? <laughs> I do. All right, we're at a dead stop on a beautiful day here at the Lake of the Ozarks in a Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck. All right. So for water sports, let's do that first. We'd engage it into gear. We get the slack out of the line for the people behind us. Now, a C-Ray 240 Sun Deck has a three degree bow rise hole, which means from the back seat to the tip of the bow, trim down, you only have three degree variance in visibility. So this boat planes extremely well. Usually there's different tricks to making a boat plane. This one, it doesn't matter. We can go easy, we can go hard. But water sports, we're gonna go ahead and pop them out of the water. And as soon as we hit about 3,000 RPM, we're going to just use a couple fingers here and slow back down. And what that'll do for us is it's going to put us right at a good operating speed for tow sports. You know, wakeboarding, kneeboarding, uh, skiing. If you barefoot, you're going to want to pick it up to about 30. Tubing, you know, 20 to 25 is pretty fast, but the boat's running extremely flat. We have a nice shape to the wake back there. So, I mean, this is a great water sports speed. So now let's see what a good cruise speed is. What we want to try to do for our cruise speed is stay under 3,500 RPM. That's when a boat gets the best fuel burn and see what a good speed is. So I'm going to give it a couple clicks up. I already know what it is on this boat. It's 3,400 RPM at 28 miles an hour. About two clicks trimmed down. So right here, you know, we're running roughly low or upper 20s. We're staying under 3,500 RPM, which gives us our absolute best fuel economy. And we could just sit here and cruise like this all day comfortably. Now that we've determined a good water sports speed and, you know, what our uh, cruise speed is, let's go ahead and punch it. So we're going to trim it back down. And we're going to put a hard and heavy load on the boat. Woo! -hoo! 350 mag really picks up, takes right off. So 35 miles an hour, and look how flat we're running on the bow above the stem. Still running nice and flat. So you know, right here about 40, a little over, trimmed all the way down to our top end, because we're pushing that nose down. Now watch what we do when we trim up. One, two. So we trimmed up, and now all of a sudden we're running 45. Let the nose come up a little more, 46. I went up a little high there, so we started to lose speed. So let's bring it back down. So a little over 45 
miles per hour. This is going to be our top speed, and it's really comfortable right there. So remember, before we do a hard turn, trim back down, but you really can't hurt this boat. The whole design grabs to the water. Look, I'm going to turn it hard, really hard. And you can whip right back around. And look how the boat immediately comes back flat. Just a great hole design. Punch it again, push it. Watch how we can turn it. Other way. See how we're not bouncing around? It's just such a good hole. So let's come back down here, and I want to talk to you a moment about how to operate your trim tabs. So one question I get asked a lot is, how do you operate trim tabs? So trim tabs are indeed the flaps on the back of the boat. What they're made for is to increase lateral stability. So if you have too many people on one side of the boat, you can hit some buttons on the dash here and one will go down and it'll level itself out. So it's really easy to work as long as you don't overthink it or over operate it. I've seen a lot of people when they have a new system such as trim tabs, they get so excited they just want to mess with them. So don't do that. Don't use them unless you need them. So before you get your tabs moving, you know, assuming you're ready to use them, the best way to do it is to always pick something directly in front of you. In this scenario, you can't see it on the camera, but there's a radio tower way, way, way up the lake. So that's what I'm going to use as my, I don't know, point to be directly in front of me. So to show you what they do, I'm gonna get the boat going at cruise speed, straight ahead, and I'm gonna drop one. And what you're gonna see is I won't touch the wheel and the boat's gonna start to turn away from the tab. Then I'll bring that back up and use the other tab. You know, that's how you know they work. But the purpose is to level out the ride. So they're based on pressure, how you push them. So I recommend not holding it down, just doing computer clicks like a mouse, maybe one, two, see how that works if that's right you know perfect if not do it some more um, if the load on the boat like a couple heavy people moved on one side it's really gonna mess up your tabs and that's okay don't let it scare you about a quick 10 Mississippi one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we'll take them from all the way messed up to all the way up and you can start back over remember only set them going straight if you're turning while you set them it defeats the purpose that's what they're made for what we use them for on this lake this is a beautiful day but typically it's rough as hell and you can't enjoy yourself so what we do is get the boat at our comfortable cruise speed or your boat at a comfortable cruise speed and put them both down. It's going to slow the boat way down. Yes, you're going to run at a higher RPM and a slower speed, but it's going to stick that nose into the water where it can't slam or slap. It's going to ride extremely smooth right there. So let's go ahead and find our cruise speed. Billy's going to hold the camera. Hats on backwards. There's no reason to use your trim tabs when you're trimmed up, by the way. It kind of makes a boat oxymoron. So right here, we're just going to run, let's say, 35, 30 miles an hour. Our radio station tower is directly in front of us. I'm going to let go the steering wheel and push one side down. See how immediately we're turning far away from our radio tower? Let's go ahead and bring that back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to get a line back with that radio tower. Wheel is straight, boat straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you'll see that we're turning this way. So that's how you know they work. What I want Billy to do now, this filament, is come over on my side of the boat and let's see if we can make it lean. Let's get as far over on this side as we can with our tabs up. So right here, do you see how the nose of the boat is on this side? Because all of our weight's here. So I'm going to go straight and I'm just going to push this side down. One, two. Perfect. Now we're running perfectly lateral flat. Let's do one more. There. Now, Billy, keep the camera on the nose and walk over to this side and watch what happens. As our weight gets redistributed, now we're running crooked. See? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten brings them back up. Now we're running straight and smooth again. 
Again, let's say the water's real rough. It doesn't matter if we're turning or not. We're gonna go ahead and just bury them both in the water. And I want you to really watch on the GPS gauge on the screen here, what happens to our speed. The boat slows way down. I'm not, I'm not descending on the throttle at all. In fact, I'm not even touching it. I'm not even touching the so wheel. So now, let's trim back up and look at me, Bill. No, look, not touching the shifter. Watch on your GPS gauge on screen how our speed is increasing. So we're getting the boat up on top of the water. So I hope that, that this video, by actually taking you out and showing you what the trim tabs do, that it'll help you operate, operate them when you're out on the water with your friends and family. Now that we understand what our buttons and switches do, that our gauges all work as they should, we went through our systems and our gauges, uh, we know what our cruise speed is, water sport speed, top speed, and we understand how to operate trim, tr trim tabs, we're just gonna go put this back on the trailer and take you with us. What's up? Billy and I both love captain's call, so we're gonna take you back with us with it on. So a Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck, hopefully you can see it's why. It's one of my favorite boats of all time. 21 degree dead rice hull, cuts through rough water with ease. This one's in amazing shape, well powered by 350 mag MPI with the Bravo 3 outdrive, has captain's call exhaust and trim tabs. Just a phenomenal boat, you, you can't fault it. But for anyone shopping, this is why this is one of the greatest reselling boats of all time. By watching this video, you see the boat responds well. It's just, it's just not this specific one, it's every 240. Not everyone's gonna be this nice, but every one of them's gonna ride and run this way. So, we're gonna finish this video up with a little drone footage after we get her back up on the trailer here. Thanks for watching our channel. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the water.
And remember, when you're done boating for the day, shut your batteries off. Just a good old